Ghost of Tsushima is a beautiful open world game with breathtaking views, cinematic combat scenes and an amazing story filled with in-depth characters. The main story follows Jin Sakai, a man raised by the samurai code by his uncle and role model Lord Shimura. But when the Mongol invaders come to his homeland and ravage his people, will he still hold on to his creed or forsake his honour to become the ghost of Tsushima? One of the strong suits of this game for me is its main story and character development. The story itself is split into three acts and this coincides with the game map and the character progression. As you advance through the game, you see how the minds of the characters evolve and how they are shaped depending on their situation. For example, at the beginning of the game, Jin Sakai is an honourable romanticised samurai who would face his force head on, never resorting to sly tactics. But seeing the aftermath of what the Mongols had done to his people and the remnants laying across Tsushima, he starts to transition into the ghost an assassin of the night, but at the same time he is having a constant internal struggle against himself. He does not want to go against his uncle's teachings and become a deceitful assassin. The game further emphasises this when Jin first backstabs someone and you are treated to a flashback to a time where his uncle was almost assassinated. There his uncle taught him an integral lesson that will be the foundation for his psyche. He should always face a man and look him in the eyes before killing him, an honourable kill, not attacking from the shadows like a coward. This game is filled with these short little flashbacks, further building on Jin's character and this is one of the many things I love about this game. This game truly is stunning, especially when you're just riding your horse and exploring the world as it is. With its different regions, each having its own unique set of flowers and trees that are colourful and vibrant. Together, with the flowing wind makes the landscape so serene and beautiful. There are also hidden little pockets of areas around the map filled with statues and monuments that make it look so picturesque. The first couple of hours consisted of me just randomly stopping, standing still and taking in the view. It's so easy to get distracted in this game, in a good way. Moreover, there is no minimap in this game, but the waypoints are found by using the guiding wind, which is a really creative take on traditional open world RPGs and how to get from point A to point B. In addition, the world is full of side little activities. For example, anytime you see foxes or golden birds, you can follow them and they often lead you to a reward or a shrine. You can also find hot springs, bamboo racks or parkour routes each rewarding you a slight boost in stats or a charm that you can attach to your katana. The combat in this game certainly is not new, but it does have its own originality to it. While in normal combat, Jin has four different samurai stances, each specialised in fighting different enemy types you encounter in the game. One for swordsmen, one for shieldmen, another for pikemen and the last one for brutes. As you develop your individual skill trees, your raw damage increases as well as unlocking new movesets. You can also play as the ghost. Here you will rely more on the shadows and the tall grass to assassinate the enemy. I personally played this style, well I tried to play this style. I usually sneak around the camp at night assassinating enemies until I get caught. Then I just have to run around the camp, sword at hand, fighting everyone. The ghost skill tree enables you to use ninja weapons like kunais, smoke bombs and poison. In the game it is deemed dishonourable to use these, but if you are about to die I say you use it. My most favourite parts of this game were the duels. Every duel in this game is set in a beautiful spot with the wind blowing at just the right speed so all the leaves can flow in tandem or there's like a group of fireflies dancing around you or you're surrounded by a sea of lanterns. Every single duel will gas you up. Just think about it. You're locked in battle with the enemy in a cinematic style, two samurai against each other in a life and death situation and depending on the difficulty you put, you will either get battered or they will literally beat you up so hard that you will feed it in real life. These jewels are challenging, but they are so satisfying when you win. This game also has other features, where you can change the setting to make it look black and white and switch the language to Japanese so it feels like those old Kurosawa films. It also has picture mode, however, I personally didn't use this mode because I was having too much fun playing the game and I didn't want to play Instagram for Samurais. That being said, the cosmetics in this game is vast. There are so many different armor sets to choose from with different color combinations. You can personalize Jin whichever way you want. Obviously, this game is not perfect and it has got its flaws, but the one thing that bothered me was the facial animations. Bro, that was whack. Don't get me wrong, the voice actor did an amazing job and in some of the cutscenes, you can feel the amount of emotion and passion they put into their characters, but this doesn't translate too well with the facial animation. I feel like the game developers knew about this, so to solve their problem, they just did the cutscenes from behind the characters or shot from far away. Also, the minor side quests were kind of repetitive and boring. It always ended up with me fighting some Mongols and rescuing a civilian. After a while, they just become bland and not enjoyable.
Now, knowing all of this, let's ask them the main question. Should you still play Ghost of Tsushima? 100%. This game overall is still a banger, a PlayStation masterpiece. The story of its character development is on point with one of the best visually appeasing worlds in gaming history. If you are contemplating on playing this game, I recommend you play it one time. Overall, I'd rate this game a solid 8 out of 10.